we're taking a deep dive into Procreate 5 in order to create an animation from start to finish. Tip Tut. Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're doing the final steps of this little animation that we've made inside of Procreate. Now in the last episode we created all the roughs and did all the animation. This time we're just going to be creating the final artwork and making sure that that looks good uh, inside of Procreate and also works functionally as well. So let's just pause this. Uh, if you don't know what I'm doing, you started on the third video in a series, I recommend starting on the first one. If you do and you have been following along, hopefully you should be able to follow along quite simply. So. Let's just hide these layers for now. We have our reference layer that we created back in the first episode with all of our artwork on it that we're happy with. Basically, we're going to replicate the structure of this artwork across all of our frames now. Um, however, doing so will require making sure we maintain the animation structure that we've created. As we've discussed previously, uh, each frame is represented as a layer in the layers palette, scrubbing back and forth between the frames you can see how they correlate directly with the layers that we do have here. However, Procreate will also treat a folder as a single frame, and that's how we're gonna make sure we maintain our uh, artistic layers and, and, and license without being destructive. For example, if I take this start frame, I add a few frames on top of it, and I group all of these into a single frame, you'll notice that the timeline down the bottom here hasn't changed, and if we click play, it still plays the same animation that we've made before. And that's because basically that first frame has now been replaced with this group, which I'm gonna name first. Again, because obviously that um, is now in the, in the folder. I'm gonna name it start, not first, just for consistency. So essentially this process is now going through and drawing inside of this folder what we want to create. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one of these frames in real time with you, and then I'm just gonna fast forward through the rest because otherwise it's gonna be quite boring and you've already watched me do that in the first episode of this series. So I'm just gonna grab my syrup brush. I'm gonna grab one of my browns here, uh, and I'm gonna to go to this first layer for the pot. I'm gonna make sure that my um, drawing assist is turned on. And I'm only gonna draw this pot once, and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna basically replace this reference layer as the background with this pot layer, so I don't have to draw it over and over again. So let's just grab this pot here and start drawing. At this point, I'm being really careful because I do want this to be the finished product that we see, okay? So I'm just gonna be grabbing all of my bits here. What I might do is I'll Draw a second layer at the bottom of the pot uh, with a drawing assist on it. And I'm just doing that again so that we don't destroy anything. We want non-destructive work processes so that we can come back and edit this later if we want to. If I add a new layer on top here. I go to clipping mask like we did in the first episode. I can add a darker brown color with Oops, excuse me, with my noise brush, uh, I believe it was 20% size, without affecting any of the other layers. I'm gonna grab the lighter color for a moment and just bring in the bottom of the pot there. And there we go. If you remember also, I took the top of the pot and I added a clipping mask to it. And then using the selection freehand tool, I separated out. The pot like so. There you go, that's better. So that I could draw in rather easily using the noise brush some shadows. Okay, we then created on top of that, if you remember, some uh, some dirt, dirt layer. And we did that again by lassoing or using the selection tool. Just grab the area that we wanted. We also added a little bit of feather, I think a 1% feather on that. And using the syrup tool, syrup brush, painted that in. Okay. That's got a bit of a clean edge for me. So I'm just gonna run over that again with the syrup brush, just to roughen it up slightly along that top edge. And then using alpha lock, 
I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a bit of texture to that sand, that earth here. Right, and there is the pot. I'm happy with that pot. Okay. So once you're happy with that layer that you want to be as the foreground, it's simply a case of selecting all these layers here, grouping them again. I like to call them background or foreground, whichever one it's going to be. And dragging that folder to the bottom of the stack. Now we already have our reference here, which we probably don't need anymore, but I'm going to keep it. But because we already have our reference as our background, we're going to have to disable that before it will allow us to drag our background layer below it and set that instead to be the background. Now, when we play through our animation, that background layer is always going to be there and we don't have to draw it again. Really useful. Okay, so let's do our first frame and then I'll speed through the rest. Reference layer I'm going to keep for now is hidden so it doesn't appear in our animation and that will allow me to work on the bits that I want to work on in here. Just going to grab the drawing assist tool and I'm going to work backwards up. Okay, so uh, the leaves would be first. So the lowest thing in the frame. And because we can't see the backs of them, it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to block out all the layers first as well. Because you don't want to be switching um, brushes back and forth. That adds unnecessary time to your workflow. Whereas if you do everything first, and of course you can then hide things if they're getting in your way, if you do everything first, with one brush, you don't have to keep switching back and forth. I'm just going to put that guide layer on top and reduce the opacity. I'm going to go grab my face layer, face color, which was this pink, if you remember. And for this time, I'm actually going to turn off onion skin so that I can see just the frame that I'm working on. Oops, didn't click the layer there. I'm going to make sure it has drawing assist on. And I'm going to bring in the head. Need another layer now for the sunglasses. Again, if you want to, you can turn on layer assist. If you don't want to, that's also fine. For example, for the mouth here, I might turn on layer assist. Make sure that's nice and smooth. Cool. For these petals, I'm going to just leave it on vertical assist rather than radial like we did in the original episodes. Uh, I'm also going to pop them on two layers below and I'm not going to group these. I'm going to do all the shading with alpha lock because I already know what it is I want to be working with. I also believe that we did hot pink for the top petals, which again need drawing assist on. And we did a nice purple for the lower petals. Making sure that those connect behind the head there so that I can drag them in. Fill the color. And we're going to grab this nice dark purple here. Actually, let's grab this slightly lighter one. Does that look a bit better? Yeah, that looks quite nice. Grab that. Oops, we're on the same layer. And we'll start to fill these in. Now this one we don't want layer assist on. Or well, you might want to, it's completely up to you. If you're having trouble seeing again, you can turn off the layers above it, even the face and the shades if you wanted to. Um, because you may want a bit of uniqueness in your petals, which is why you don't have drawing assist on. If you want them to all to be the same, then of course, leave it on. Oops, so there I left a gap, that was silly of me. And voila. Now I believe that's all of our layers for this one frame ready to go. So I'm gonna add the shading to these, and then I'm gonna blast through the rest of these frames in fast forward mode. So I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna be brave, and I'm gonna directly add all of the shading onto one layer. So I'm gonna alpha lock that, instead of making a new layer and clipping masking it, I'm going to grab our nice dark color here. I am going to make sure for this one that layer assist is still turned on. I'm just going to start to fade out those leaves. Now, some of these are hidden. 
so I may not spend a large amount of time on them. You can see at this point what I'm trying to replicate is my usual speed and workflow. So it might be useful to turn your sketch on so you can see what these original lines are going to be like. But other than that, it's literally just a case of working straight ahead. Alpha locking your frames as you go. Shading your frames to your likeness. So you're happy with them. And moving on. Don't hesitate. You've already done the hard work. It's now just a case of doing the fun bit. So we'll be grabbing some lighter colors here for these frames. Some lighter, lightest colors on the edge. I know I said I wasn't going to do this, but I like the way it looked. So I'm going to continue to do so. Alpha lock this one. Keep assisted turned on. We've grabbed our hot pink here. So we're going to go some shades darker. And because I can see where the head is, it doesn't really matter what happens behind it. Okay. The benefit as well of doing it on the same layer without clipping masks and stuff, of course, is that um, you don't have to worry about painting in areas which uh, aren't part of that layer. So you're not going to accidentally start drawing over stuff. Really useful. All right, let's turn on his face. Alpha lock the face. Grab our dark face color. Oops, for this one we actually want the assistance turned off now because we only want the shading on one side of his head. Helps him look round. Nice. On this layer, I'm just gonna add a quick bit of shading on the glasses. I'm not gonna do it like it was. Or am I? Yeah, go on then, why not? It's already alpha locked. We can just add in a little bit of nice syrup. We'll have to undo the assisting though, because we want all these to go in one direction. Oops, excuse me. Might need that brighter color. And we'll just do one big shine. Oh, no, let's do it properly. Take longer, but that's okay. I've already resigned myself to the fact I won't be getting much sleep tonight. <laughs> right, and there, pretty much, is our single frame. Now, of course, some of these things are hidden. Did I necessarily need to do it? No, but it also means that I can duplicate these frames later on if I want to, and there will be some of that. Uh, if it's roughly the same shape, there's no point drawing it twice, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump right ahead and fast forward through this, uh, and we'll probably return in just sort of screen capture mode, um, because I don't want this GoPro to fail again, but it'll just be watching the animation, so you won't be missing anything of me drawing or anything like that. So I'll see you on the other side of this little time lapse.
and there we go. That's the end of this animation in Procreate Masterclass. Uh, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this one. Basically, what I did there was just go through and add some gradient shading to all of the frames. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I really do hope you've enjoyed this series. Let me know if you want more of this sort of thing. And hopefully I'll see you next time on another episode of Tip Time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.